orgasms, the holy grail of female sexual pleasure, where body and mind unite to create an explosive climax and one very happy ending. But not all of us are having what she's having. One in three women are now experiencing sexual difficulties that are robbing us of our greatest pleasure. But there is one woman coming to our rescue. Leading psychosexual therapist Trudy Hannington is on a crusade to save our sex lives. I, I get fear, but I... Sex is almost seen like um, a luxury. So it's, if it goes wrong, it's the last thing that gets fixed. And they find it quite difficult to ask for help. It, it's almost like, um, like it, it's, it's not important enough. But in actual fact, what I see when sex goes wrong, it's devastating. Particularly to, to women, it's their self-esteem, it's their confidence. It has such a huge knock-on effect to the rest of your life. This summer, cameras are being allowed into Trudy's therapy room for the first time to follow her as she treats two women in desperate need of her help in the bedroom. It does feel like a domestic duty, yeah. And I think that's why I, I don't want to do it because it feels like a chore. Very much in love we were then, weren't we, darling? Yeah. Got that sparkle in our eyes. <laughs> that 58, yeah, that's talking 40-odd years of orgasms. And then to suddenly stop, it's definitely robbery. Life robbery. Can Trudy help these women rediscover themselves sexually and give them back the greatest gift, the ability to come again? when they start to do well in sex therapy. Sometimes you get a voicemail of, yes, I did it. Sorry, no, no, no. Thank you. Trudy Hannington is the chair of the College of Sexual and Relationship Therapists and one of the leading psychosexual therapists in the country. She runs a busy clinic in Yorkshire, treating up to 50 clients a week, aged 18 to 80, for all kinds of sexual dysfunction. Many people that I see have had a problem for maybe two or three years, sometimes even longer than that. So once they're in the door and they've took the biggest step of all, walking over that threshold and bearing the soul to somebody, you know, talking about the most intimate thing that they probably never spoke to anybody else ever about it. Take a seat. 34-year-old mother of two, Fiona Potter, has asked Trudy for help with one of the most common problems she treats, low desire for sex. Have you had the conversation with Adam about what would be good enough? What would be kind of a reasonable goal to be aiming for? No. We don't actually, it's just the thing, we don't actually talk about sex, mm. which I think is a, is a problem. We need to sort of talk more openly about it. Uh -huh. Okay. I suppose in my head, I think if we talk about it, he's going to think, I'm up for it. Okay, and is that because he's kind of pressurising at all, or...? He's not pressurising, but I feel like I've got to, okay. because I haven't for so long. Fiona lives near Malden, Essex, with her husband Adam and their five-year-old daughter, Grace. Hello! <laughs> Would you like to come in? This is our living room. Um, my dog. My husband. 90% <laughs> of the time we spend in this room. Adam works days as a mechanic and Fiona works nights as a carer. And after 13 years together, the lack of sex in their marriage has become the elephant in the room. This is our room. Not the tidiest. That's all. Well, it's all right. My side's tidy. Yeah. yeah. Bed where the magic happens <laughs> or doesn't, <laughs> as it were. Uh, yeah. When was the last time you two had sex? Uh, the beginning of the month, a wedding anniversary. Oh, wedding anniversary, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. previous to that, it was on my birthday, which is like the milestones. <laughs> yeah, I will get it because it's my birthday. It's cannot, you know, can, can I be bothered? Oh, that sounds really horrible. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, just, I'd rather go to sleep. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's because it's just been so tired and working and that. It just... 
if you've not always been tired and working, have you? No, Come no, on. that's no excuse. It's hard for me because if I didn't instigate it, then we wouldn't have sex at all, I don't think. We would, honest. just not very often. Yeah, maybe a couple of times a year then. Yeah. Uh, but Maybe three. Yeah, that's what... That's, uh, I don't know, there's no romance or anything beforehand, so it's just sort of... Get up there. Yeah. <laughs> and women need to be wooed. So if I was to go, woohoo, and then <laughs> jump on for no. the ride. It doesn't work, no? No, no. Uh, I suppose I make a joke out of it to stop it hurting. Yeah. Sometimes she'll say not tonight, or I'm not in the mood, or go away, or whatever, but most of the time she will just physically lay there frozen solid and, and um, yeah, and just blank me out totally. I got to a point where I'd had enough and I told her I was going to leave her um, because we needed to get something sorted out. I was just sick of being rejected. Just constant rejection just doesn't do you any favours, I don't think. For me to be prepared to not see Grace every day, that was a big, big step for me. So I think that itself shows how far I've been pushed and how much it got to me. Really. Sex is an important part of a relationship and I do understand that and without it you drift and that's what I'm scared of with, with Adam is drifting to the point of no return. Does that scare you? It does scare me because I do love him and I just don't know how to show him. Sorry. <laughs> oh, hi, Elaine. Coming through. 58-year-old Elaine Feely has been through the menopause, a hormonal change women experience in later life that for some can cause devastation to sex drive and functioning. Elaine has lived without sex for the last four years. I would love to have a sexual experience back with my okay. husband. Uh -huh. I'd love for him to be able to come and put his arms around me in the kitchen and then it yeah. just leads to quick sex on the table. Yeah, okay. But the, the desire's not gone. I still desire it. Oh, so it. the desire, okay. I, it's fear. It's the fear of the pain. Pain, fear of the pain. The sex was becoming uncomfortable mm -hmm. at first. Okay. But then one night, I just had the most horrendous pain. Mm. Just as if I'd been stabbed, right. literally. Uh -huh. and. Uh, I just pushed my husband off me and said, stop, go away. Yeah. I can't enjoy sex anymore. Mm. It's gone for me now and I don't want that, I want it back. Okay. Elaine and her second husband, Keith, are in the process of retiring to Clacton-on-Sea. Almost 20 years ago, Keith was teaching at a school nearby and caught Elaine's eye at a parent's evening. The best place we've ever had sex, or the most bizarre place we've ever had sex. The most bizarre place we've ever had sex. This beer. Has <laughs> it really? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I remember the one in Castleton because of those bleating flies. Oh, the flies over the long grass up in the woods. Yeah. There's been lots of places. For boats. We had sex in a toilet at a wedding reception. Yeah. Fox all over having sex that in a box. That was bloody hard work, that was. <laughs> It was a ludicrous thing. God, could you imagine that now? Yeah. We'd, have, we'd have to be rescued. Well, I mean, I'm sure I'd pull a muscle. He was very, very shy of women and wary of sex. The flexibility that I've got now <laughs> is negligible. But me being like 60s baby I was, I was all for it, let's go for this. So we arranged for me to go to his house for dinner. I walked in the door that afternoon. He'd got the dinner cooking. Didn't have time to dinner. It was just clothes off and sex on the floor instantly. The sex was amazing. I've never had an orgasm like it before. This was my first, not external clitoral orgasm. This was a deep penetration orgasm. It took me to another world. And they continued like that from then on for months. And it was, I would lay in bed after the orgasm and I would say, I feel so good now. I wish I could die this minute. 
because there's no way I could ever feel better than this. And that's how it was for a long, long time. Keith and Elaine are both married for the second time. They have six children and four grandchildren between them. They met shortly after Elaine's 40th birthday and have been inseparable ever since. Gosh, Very much in love we were then, weren't we, darling? Yeah. Got that sparkle in our eyes. <laughs> it's a good photo. You don't often smile like that. Don't I? You don't anymore. Maybe you're sad now. Uh, well, I'd say I'm always laughing there. Keith and I, when we first started living together, swore that we would never have separate beds. But that's not what happens. <laughs> oh, this was me in my slut days. Stockings and suspenders <laughs> at 40. <laughs> Because we haven't had any sexual relationship whatsoever for the last four years, we've become more like a brother and sister living together. We love each other dearly, we would die for each other, but it's that spiritual connection that's vanished. That secret spark in the eye that you share. Yes, I'd like to get that sparkle back, not tears. Having uh, met Elaine and Fiona today, I mean, they are classic of what I see every day in the clinic. In my experience of many years of being a sex therapist is there's always more to the story. It's never just low desire. It's never just the menopause. Something will have happened that's led it to be as bad as it is. So it can be quite a difficult journey, but a well worthwhile one. Working mum Fiona Potter has struggled with low desire for sex for the past 10 years and has started a course of therapy with Trudy Hannington in a bid to overcome her problem. Usually in my experience is that when you meet a woman with a sexual difficulty it's always much more complex than what the presenting issue is. It, it generally goes far deeper and, and will have gone on possibly a long time or maybe is still sitting around from something that happened in childhood and it is important that that's dealt with as part of the therapy process. Were you brought up by your mum and your dad or? No, my mum and dad split up when I was about 11. Mm -hmm. For me that was hard mm -hmm. because I was a daddy's girl. Right. Um, I felt that sort of separation. Okay. And did he keep contact? Did you get to see him when he left? Not really. Okay. He kind of got his own, his next wife and mm -hmm. her child and... Right. I didn't really get to see my dad that much at all. Okay. He'd say he'd come round and then he didn't. And, okay. Um, my mum brought us up as Christians mm -hmm. and um, obviously it was no sex before marriage yeah. and stuff like that. So, rebellion, mm -hmm. I, um, at 16, fell pregnant. Okay. Um, just sort of basically say, up oh, yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I can do it now, it's legal. Yeah. Um, and then I miscarried that one. So basically, in a roundabout way, I was pregnant from the age of 16 to when I had Luke. Okay, so did you have more than one miscarriage? And... Uh, yeah, I had um, two miscarriages and one abortion. Okay, okay, so a tough time between that 16 and 18 for you. Yeah. Okay, so those first sort of experience of sex when it's supposed to be fun and be lovely, mm. that fun thing called sex that got you quite difficult outcomes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. then I, the person that I fell pregnant with... Um... The tale of the tooth fairy. Long ago, when there were lots of fairies in the world, but not many people at all... Fiona's children are now 15 and 5. She and Adam manage childcare between their shifts and usually see each other for just an hour a day. That someone could help her, not knowing that wishing this would call her fairy friend to her. See you in the morning. <laughs> see you in the morning. Busy modern life may play its part in sex going off the boil, but to understand the full picture for Fiona, Trudy needs to delve deep into her sexual relationships with men before Adam. Your first sexual experiences in terms of the actual sex itself, any difficulties then? Um, I think there was definitely a point where he just wanted to have sex and I didn't really want to. Mm -hmm. so um, and I 
and I had sex with him just to get him off mm. me. Okay. He just persisted and persisted, mm. and I just did it because he kept on. Okay. And did that go on for quite a long period of time where it would be like no, that? No, it was just that once. And then mm. I think after that point, it was like I would use sex not as a control thing. I wouldn't have it with him. Ah, okay. Okay. Looking back now, that was a, mm. a point. Yeah. I think that might be why I have problems now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because one of the things that I've seen of this and seen a lot of women in therapy is that one of the things that when women feel like they've lost control of everything and they're not managing and coping mm -hmm. is the one thing that we hold on to is sex because it is the one thing that we, we can say no to. Yeah. And when there's nothing else left to give, that yeah. is the one that we say, that's it. I mean, one of the things when women are either forced to have sex or feel really under pressure to have sex and still go ahead with it has, in my experience, long-term effect on sexual functioning. And there's a lot of things that have happened to Fiona in her young life already that were, have been pretty traumatic stuff as well that would impact on the relationship now. I'm a very sort of private kind of person and to open up like that about my sex, my sex life, it, it, it was very, very difficult. Well, I was quite upset because it was a realisation that that could be why I'm st stopping myself from having sex with my husband because it's a control, more of a control issue, which is quite bad really. Her role modelling in life is big breakups and fractures within families and lack of commitment. And what we want to do is end some of that by saying goodbye to it and then for Fiona to work on herself so that she starts to feel good about herself. Have you read about oestrogen replacement and things? You said you've, you've kind of always shied away from it, from, right. from HRT, because as you said, of all the, the hype fears yeah. about cancer and things. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, the menopause made penetration so painful for Elaine that she stopped having sex of any kind with her husband. What happens, even though in your head you might have the desire to have sex, you've got, it's called vaginal atrophy, and the vagina starts to close down, the cervix lowers, and it's almost like he's in quite a tight, tight space, and it's like chafing, almost like carpet burns, and it hardly inspires you to think, oh yeah, I must do that in a few days' time. Yeah. Um, so did the foreplay just eventually just kind of fizzle out? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, Keith will sometimes come into my bed. We have two beds separate. Yeah. He'll get an erection if he comes and cuddles me. Right. Which will instantly make me feel guilty because I felt like I was teasing him. Okay. Uh -huh. um, but a bit like the old expression, prick teaser, oh, where right. you'll, you'll let a man mm -hmm. go so far and then mm -hmm. you'll turn around and say, no, you can't do that. Okay. So okay. I've actually told my husband to go out oh, and have gosh. sex with somebody else because I know that because he loves me. Because how bad you feel? Yes, because that's how guilty I feel. Okay. And because I know that he's still a very virile, active sexual man. Yeah. I assume he hasn't gone and done no, that? No, he wouldn't. Yeah. His view on sex is totally unselfish. He wants to give me pleasure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, really, I shouldn't have a problem with it, but right. I do. It's not just about your husband, it's about you. And you had a good sex life yes. and lovely orgasms, you know. It's really important that you get it back for yourself, not, not just for him. That's and right. Just because you hit the menopause doesn't mean life's over. And certainly not in the sex department. Elaine's decision not to take hormone replacement therapy may mean that penetration is off the cards, but now Trudy's job is to help her find other ways to bring intimacy back into her marriage. The remit is to hopefully get them enjoying really good sex together um, without it having to mean penetrative sex so that we've not got that pressure and guilt. They don't even sit on the same sofa anymore because she's so worried he'll get an erection if she was to hold his hand. And, you know, women shouldn't feel guilty. You know, nobody ever died of an erection. In an effort to help Fiona understand her past and move on from it, Trudy has asked her to write a series of letters to herself at the most painful moments of her life. It's going to be weird writing, dear Fiona. I know that your dad walked out and left you, your mum and two brothers, but there is no need to blame yourself. 
what happened happened because your mum and dad fell out of love. I know that you went through a lot at this age with the miscarriages and the abortion. I seem to have blocked out the pain that I felt after these. I think this was the one that I woke up in so much pain that I was screaming. I also remember the nurse telling me to keep quiet as I would wake with the other pain time as you do in a new relationship. This one day I really didn't want to have sex. I kept saying no, but he kept on asking, and in the end I kind of just turned over and let him get on with it. I've pushed the bad things aside. I think I need to just let those bad things come forward so I can deal with them. The men in my life have been important to me, but they've all hurt me in one way or another. So it, it's a case of forgiving and moving on. And I don't let my guard down, even after being with him for 13 years. I don't let my guard down. And that's what I've got to learn to do, let my guard down. Today, Keith and Elaine are making the trip up to Yorkshire together to see if Trudy can help put the spark back in their sexless marriage. I'm hoping that this session will start to help us unravel why this has occurred, why the rift between us has occurred. But it's mainly me. No, I don't agree with you. You don't think you've got a problem? You I, think no, I think it's us. I think we've got the problem. What's your problem? My problem is I'm married to you. <laughs> the worst thing about it is how I feel it's affected her well-being. How she feels, how she responds, how she's on edge, yeah. how she would see the negative in almost everything. Mm. Fair comment, Elaine, do you think it has? Yes. I started mm -hmm. to feel like I was getting old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't feel beautiful anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. That for me is very, very sad. I'm not surprised to hear it, mm -hmm. but that's very, very sad because she is beautiful, mm -hmm. but actually it's their inner beauty which I value much, much more. Mm -hmm. However, externally, it is obvious that she is very attractive. If you could wave a magic wand, end a therapy, and you've achieved what you want to achieve, what would the picture look like? Describe very, it. Very, very simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'd actually be sleeping in the same bed. Mm -hmm both start naked and we would be cuddling each other, mm -hmm. both before we went to bed and when I got up in the morning. If I want to have an orgasm, all I've got to do is masturbate. You know, that's not a problem. I mean, I've got a vivid imagination. Problem for me is how do I get this level of intimacy back and get that, if you like, that bond that we used to have, yeah. you know, in our relationship. When you walk down the street now, do you hold hands? Yeah. Usually. Okay, what about kisses? Any at all? Rarely, rarely these days. I mean, I, I good night kisses. I, I mean, I always wanted kisses. and always said to her about giving her a kiss when I go and when I used to go to work, mm. I would always give her a kiss goodbye mm -hmm. because I don't go anywhere now. <laughs> so. Okay, so I'd like to introduce a, a couple of my requests. All right, I would like you to when you just go into the shop, a nice kiss goodbye as you're going to go, and when he comes back, I want you to listen for him coming back. I want you to get up and greet him as he comes back in with a nice kiss. Oh, hi, love. Did you get everything you wanted at the shop? So just 30 seconds or so, nothing huge, every day, OK? You ready? You ready? OK, OK. Now I've got to give Elaine a kiss first. Mm. Now we're going along. OK, see you in a little while. OK, yeah, OK, OK. It was a normal kiss, but a double normal kiss. <laughs> I normally get one, and I actually got two. So, perhaps uh, having another one coming back in a bit strange. Lift you over. Oh, Go away from me. She just okay, yes, yeah, she did. Mm. Hi, darling. Hello, yeah, sweetie. Bye. There she is. There she is. Kate was there on. Is. The other thing I'd like you to do is just so we get back into the proper kissing, okay? But imagine she's a princess and she's asleep and you're trying to wake her up, OK? And when you're doing the kissing, Keith, I want you to concentrate on what does this feel like for me? Where do I like to kiss her? How do I like to kiss her? The same for you, Elaine. Is this kissing you? Feel it. No, that's really bad. Mm. Mm. Sweet dreams. See you in the morning. Mm. Turn that camera off. 
The following evening, it's Elaine's turn to wake her sleeping prince. What are you after? Your princess kiss? Hmm. OK. I was extremely conscious of the fact that Elaine was going to find this difficult. Got your eyes shut. Mm-hmm. You ready? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Not much of a kiss, is it? <laughs> it felt like a first date again. I hadn't um, kissed Keith in a passionate way for nearly four years. So to actually have a proper kiss, I was very nervous, but after the first initial 10 seconds was over, it just felt completely natural, something that we've done hundreds of times before, and it was just a case of falling back into that situation. Love you. No, no, no. No, I know exactly where it is. I don't need to tell. I don't need to put it in. It's been over a month since Fiona started therapy, and she's been working hard on her issues with the men in her life. Once we get on the road, I know exactly where it is. You don't need. Yeah, but I need to know how to get to the road. Yeah, I'll tell you. Both Fiona and her husband Adam cite sex as the major problem in their marriage. Last year, Adam nearly left Fiona because of it. Well, I don't know, but you said you didn't know how to get anywhere because you just follow the sat nav and don't look at the signs. It does sound as though it's got to quite extreme sort of lengths, really. There's a lot of pressure on them, thinking that you know um, this is the last chance to try and sort it. it makes it more difficult. Now that Trudy has helped Fiona face her past, she wants Adam to see the part he plays in their problem. You kind of knew about the history already? Yeah, we'd spoken about it years and years mm. ago, so yeah. it's not something that's come up recently. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh -huh. it's not something that I would have had associated with, yeah. with the issues that we've Yeah, been you're never going to forget some of the things, but what I don't want Fiona to do is to carry on feeling guilty and as though everything is her fault and that she must mm -hmm. have done something wrong and yeah. if she doesn't do certain things, then men leave. You mm -hmm. know, you know, her dad leaving so young. And because um, of what happened in September as well, Adam saying he was going to leave because yeah. of the sex issues. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. When you got to that point, Adam, what, what was going on for you? It was just frustration and uh, I was starting to feel uh, that there was something wrong with me. Had you been talking to her about it? No. Um, when we've talked about this sort of thing, mm. it usually ends up that we end up having an argument mm. about it because she thinks I'm pressuring her. Put defences up. And yeah, of she, course. She gets yeah. real defensive, so I didn't. End, I just ended up not bothered talking to her about it, and then things fester, and mm -hmm. we've not been very affectionate with each other for a long time, have we? Eventually, you learn to think, well, go then. So you, yeah, you reject, really, before you, you get it's rejected. To, yeah. The preemptive yeah. strike. Yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, absolutely. Do you try and encourage Fiona to be kinder to herself and kind of pamper herself a little bit? Uh, no. I'll be honest with you, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. Did uh, you used to when you first met? or? No. no. I've never, I've, I've, maybe that sounds quite selfish. She doesn't have a lot of confidence in herself. No, I know she doesn't. I wish she mm. did. But then but I don't exactly lift his confidence either because I don't say nice things to him. Mm. So what would romance be for you? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> if at the moment the only time you kiss or cuddle is it leads to sex, yeah. I'd like to sort of change some of that really, and but keeping it nice and safe. So if I ban sex, that's going to cause you a huge problem. If, you, if, you, if it was something that you felt was necessary, mm. You're the expert and you, you're here to help us. We reject anything that you're trying to do. With the pressure of pleasing Adam removed under the sex ban, Trudy has introduced erotic fiction to Fiona in a bid to open her up to the world of fantasy and carnal desire. My hands hesitated on the pearlescent buttons but any last shred of doubt was blown away when I pulled open the top part of her dress and reached inside for her. I pushed her breasts upwards and forwards as if serving them up on a plate. But I sensed an old familiar itch mounting in my groin, a sudden wetness in my panties. I felt her muscles clench around me as if trying to suck me further inside. She let out a wail as if she was losing all control of herself and then with a shudder that ran through her whole body, illuminated in its ecstasy. When I've read them, I have touched myself and <laughs> that's embarrassing. 
Um, it was like when I read the story in this the other day. I did have a little bit of a fumble down there, yeah. Hibiscus. Do they smell? Oh, they've got no smell. Therapy is also taking Elaine on a voyage of self-discovery. And after four long years, the siren lying dormant is showing signs of awakening. They wear comfort. Something for the bedroom, not for everyday wear. Right. <clears throat> Perhaps I'll come back when I'm looking okay, for some yeah. more day wear. No problem at all. I've been through the menopause. Uh, I can't reproduce anymore. Uh, I've decided I can't have penetrative sex anymore. And I don't want to lose my sexuality completely. So I'm going to work quite avidly in making myself feel more feminine and more female. This looks more like what I'm after. Not dressing up close, not yet. Oh, I like the idea of cat suits. Having had four children, I've got some stretch marks to hide, so that will hide them brilliantly. <laughs> it's got an open crutch. But I'm going to buy it anyway, because I like it. Three pound change. Thank you. I unconsciously, I believe, started to wear clothes that weren't feminine and weren't sexy. I think it was the drastic steps I would take not to arouse my husband. But with Trudy's help, I could start to realise that, that that's why I did it, and I didn't need to do it. Last session, Trudy reintroduced the basics of intimacy for Elaine and Keith, kissing and touching each other again after their four-year drought. And she kissed you really nice? Uh, did yes. you feel like a prince? No. OK. No. And was there any arousal? No, but there has been last night. OK, yeah. tell me about yeah. that. Keith gave me a cuddle and, uh, and then he became mm -hmm. sexually aroused and got an mm -hmm. erection. OK. And I actually lay there and I did, I said to you, didn't I? I'm sorry about that, it's your problem. <laughs> yeah, OK, because you don't need to apologise for him getting aroused, that's important. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I actually felt comfortable mm. saying it. Good. And Good. I felt like, this is great, I feel liberated, like a weight's been lifted off me. Great. I'd like to introduce more of, you talked about massage, but I'd like to see it more sensual, touching. I'd like you to call it a date, OK? So imagine you didn't live together, you'd arrange when you were going to meet. So I want you to be quite clear about when it's going to be and who is going to go first, OK? Trudy prescribes date nights to help couples reconnect and for them to build intimacy slowly by removing the pressure of sex. It may appear that not ask them to go very much, but they were at a stage where they couldn't even kiss. So if you set the homework too hard or, or, uh, or too far too fast, it won't work. They'll be too scared and they won't do it. Tonight's date is for Elaine and Keith to give each other a sensual massage for 10 minutes in their respective bedrooms. Liquid love, this is called. But sexual areas are off limits. Remove her night clothes, which I shall place over there, trying to straighten up the bed. It is a big deal because even though we're together 24 7, we've never set aside even 10 minutes to concentrate on each other. Oh gosh, they are tiny. I'm not going to see much from them, am I? I might just wear this. It's meant for the beach, but it will do for a massage. I might wear some knickers underneath it. What I will do is I'll fold this back so that if she falls asleep there, then I can just put the uh, co cover over the top of her. The slippers are not the sexy bit. It's time for the spider to call the fly into the parlour. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. But um, I'm afraid you're going to have to go now. Bye. Trudy has also prescribed date night for Adam and Fiona. She's asked them to start making romantic overtures to one another by sending the odd text. Sent me one today and one the other day saying I love you and, yeah, just little kisses and that. It makes me feel wanted and appreciated.
appreciated a bit more than I did before. Tonight, Adam has been put in charge of romance, planning an intimate evening for Fiona on her one night off. Because we've been getting on quite a lot better this week, I do feel close to him. When we have a cuddle and that now, I know that it is just a cuddle and, and it's nice. It feels safe and secure and comforting. <laughs> In 13 years together, tonight's date will be a first, and under Trudy's rules, sex is completely off the menu. The reason that I've banned sex is that I want Fiona to come out of herself and to be a bit cheeky and a bit playful, so that she's kissing Adam and knowing that he, you know they're not going to have sex. Rachel felt her heart thump with excitement. High above them was the most amazing rainbow that Rachel had ever seen. It's quite interesting when you have somebody with low desire and somebody with high desire and you lower the person with high desire and the other one automatically starts to increase. The table doesn't really scream romance, does it? Love you lots like jelly socks. Bed sheet slash tablecloth. Adapt and survive. All right. I haven't had a glass of wine in the bath ever. Another bit of homework is to try to pay each other amorous compliments. All right. You look clean. You look nice. Where did those jeans come from? These are the new ones I bought yesterday. Very nice. I like them. Very much. I noticed that she's reading a little blue book, which I thought was a bit inappropriate on a night when we're not supposed to be doing a funky chicken. <laughs> Maybe it'll be me fighting her off, being the good boy. What do you reckon, dog? I think you've done very well, thank you very much. Be all right. What are you reading that for? I was bored. I can read it while reading if like. <laughs> You'll be all right anyway. You'll be passed out by half past eight. <laughs> Why did I buy wine? I should have bought <laughs> lemonade. You do look very sexy. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I like your hair. <laughs> My hair looks shit! Ooh! Zoom in. Ooh! <laughs> um, Temptation as much as Fiona keeps throwing it in my bar. A candy coloured clown they call the Sandman tiptoes to my room every night. It's the morning after date night, and last night Elaine and Keith touched each other's bodies for the first time in years. Everything is all right. I close my eyes. We were asked by Trudy that after we'd had our first date to write each other notes about how things had gone for us and how we felt. So this is the note that I wrote to him afterwards. My darling Keith, what can I say? You know me so well. I lay just relaxing, feeling your gentle hands, wondering what your intention was. My sexy man, I'm amazed all over again at how wonderful your body is, toned, muscly and soft. I felt wonderful at being able to give you a little pleasure and can't wait for our next date. It passed too quickly. All my love me. Sweetie, absolutely outstanding. Touching your skin in that gentle way is so pleasurable. I was excited, in brackets aroused, almost immediately and continually throughout the 10 minutes. Knowing that you would not feel guilty helped immensely. My biggest difficulty, however, was trying not to kiss your skin or touching the no-go areas. But that is clearly the point of the exercise. Of course, you feel as beautiful as you ever did.
to me and it was wonderful to have the chance to enjoy it all over again. Love you lots and lots, Keith. When I actually went to bed, which was probably uh, about an hour, uh, we must have finished about quarter to 11, and I think I went to bed at about half past 11, um, and then I thought, yes, this is a good time to masturbate, and that's precisely what I did when I had a chance to really absorb it all. I think it's fairly easy to sum up the evening uh, as extremely successful. I was very tempted to wander into Keith's bedroom and say, forget Trudy, let's just do it. <laughs> but uh, obviously we didn't, we stuck to the rules. Totally successful to the extent that, uh, I think I actually dreamed that I walked into Trudy's uh, next therapy session and actually kissed her myself. <laughs> I can't help it, I can't help it, if I am We didn't break the rules. We annihilated the rules. <laughs> Just a little bit. We uh, absolutely nuked the rules. But it was the best sex we've had for... Ever? I yeah. Think. I think ever. Um, Fiona that's, thinks that's since we've been bad, married. Isn't it? Fiona was an animal. No, I wasn't. You were. She was punching me. <laughs> you were biting me at one point. No, I wasn't. You did bite Did me. I? Yes. Two months ago, Trudy began therapy with two women desperate for her help with their sexual difficulties. I see a huge amount of different problems every single day in the clinic and of course you want to fix everybody, you know, and, and sometimes you just can't. Because it is tough going through therapy, there's no doubt about that, it's, there isn't usually a very quick easy fix. A month has passed since Elaine and Keith's first date night. And having made steady and slow progress to rebuild sexual intimacy, this morning, for the first time in four years, they've made it back to familiar ground. I woke, as usual, and I could see his body silhouetted against the window. A dog curled up at his feet. And I looked at him and I thought to myself, I love this man, why, why do we have to wait for a special date night? I want to touch him now. I couldn't give a monkeys what Trudy or anybody else said. Um, and basically, from there on in, she started to have a first orgasm, stimulated by me, um, then a second, and then a third, and then a fourth, and, and so on. But to be perfectly honest, I couldn't tell you how many orgasms uh, Elaine had. I would say it's probably at least in double figures. Um, I, you know, to some extent, I don't really count them. I'm just concentrated on her, because sometimes, she goes into such ecstasy, she hasn't got a great back, um, and to some extent counting just wasn't part of what I was doing. I also had an orgasm. Hell of a mess, as it invariably is. They never show you that on the poor movies. But at that particular moment, because it had been such an achievement for both of us to actually get to that point after four years, we just decided, fuck it. We're just going to lay in this mess, in each other's arms, just to savour that moment. So we did that. We lay in bed for, must have been a good half an hour longer, just talking through what had happened and how we felt and uh, how wonderful it was, how we hadn't forgotten, what things gave each other pleasure. Then we decided that it was time to get up out of the sticky mess and go and have a shower and face the new day, with big smiles on our faces, both of us. Since breaking Trudy's sex ban on their first date, spending time together has become a weekly fixture for Adam and Fiona. Any big thing that kind of really turned a corner for you? Do you, you kind of recall a moment? <laughs> first time we had that mind-blowing sex yeah. was just, that was a turning point, I think. Mm. That was just like, wow, mm. that actually, we have neglected each other for a very long time. Yes. Um, and to have that sex that we, like we've never had it before. Yeah. <laughs> we just yeah. sat there for about ten minutes going, oh hell, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> My legs were like jelly. I was like, oh, hey. that's so good. Yeah, it was good. We're exploring each other again, which is really yeah. nice. And we're exploring new things and mm -hmm. different feelings and we're able to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, I got what I wanted out of the first session with you, with Adam, when Adam yeah, came here. Yeah, yeah. Because he then realised that in actual fact it's both of us. Yeah, that's true. Right. He wanted sex, I didn't. Yeah. So it was me that had the problem. That's exactly. So a lot of the blame was on me, but then yeah. he realised it's yeah. both of us. Yeah, he really so. took it on board. He did. I'll go up to him and give him a cuddle mm -hmm. and he'll come up and cuddle me and I know that it hasn't got to end in sex. Yes. That he's just showing me affection now. Right. It's making mm -hmm. me feel good mm. sexually. Yeah. Um, which I've not felt for years, yeah. so, yeah. Wow. I'm letting go. It's hard and it's a slow process and so it's not going to happen mm -hmm. overnight, but mm. I feel that desire. When you see a woman move to that next stage where she is orgasmic and she's enjoying sex, it's hard to describe how, I mean, how I feel and it's not even happening to me, it's happening to her. It's a life-changing thing. But it's them that went away and did it. I only gave the suggestions and some guidance. They had the motivation to change things. It's a slow process. Mm -hmm. Your mindset changes yeah. and you start thinking differently. Yeah. I was always the one that was pushy in the bedroom. Yeah. Um, and I think that's coming back very slowly. Okay. Instead of looking back to the past sex I used mm -hmm. to have and you know thinking it's gone forever, I'm yeah. now looking forward to the new sex I'm going to have.